Welcome to The Lost Rewatch, the greatest rewatch in Lost history or TV history. I keep forgetting what I'm supposed to say every week. But anyway, joining again by Karen and Anil. How's it going, guys? Great. Very happy, good, very good. Happy Lost Anniversary. Yes. We are, we're, we're actually recording this on the 15th anniversary of Lost, the greatest day ever. Yeah, this won't <laughs> be out until the first week of October. That's okay. We're still celebrating. But, yeah, I just say, <laughs> I, I went to bed last night going, that's right, 15 years. 15 years this, this since this show started and it's just still and we're still talking about it and people yeah. still and people still want to talk about it. it's just it blows me away there's and no we'll show there's no show like it, it. No. yeah there's no there's no show no. like it anywhere many try to replicate it and many and most and all have all failed so i mean well that's that's the problem you you got to do something on your own and something original i think because you yeah. can't you're not going to top this show no way. And now they're talking about maybe doing like a reboot or a spinoff and all these yeah. rumors. I, it it no. will happen. <laughs> it will especially happen. With, I feel. Especially with Apple TV, they're going to be looking to grab as many people as they can. So I, it, I, I've said, it might have been the last, we haven't posted it yet, the one I did with Ralph and Chris from Boston. I said, it will happen within a year. Yeah. I, well, yeah, I know. We'll see Lost again. I just don't want it to. I don't want them to reboot. Absolutely reboot or touch yeah. the Bible that we all have already with it. Um, give us a prequel. Tell us about the about the island and the Dharma Initiative. Uh, tell us about Karen DeGroote and Geronimo Jackson. Tell, you know, right. tell us tell us how they got started. Yeah. Tell us what was was their you know forte into getting into this whole idea of what this island is about and what they can do tell me about that i'd watch that um but don't touch what we love please. i don't i don't see i don't see them doing that yeah. even though they said they're going to reboot bsg I yeah said, how could you reboot this already i mean anyway yeah, yeah. And I think they're just really abusing the word reboot. It's we're not looking at reboots. Where if you have an extended story to tell and you want to expand on that, that would be great. Um, and possibly, I mean, frightening for people to get into. But it's not out of the question to tell us more of a lost story. Just leave the way everything is right now with what we have hold near and dear to our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> I would like a, I would like a story of this how the island started yeah, yeah. And how it, how it got its mystery how it just got its magic and mystery and all that different that's what it I would cool. like yeah I mean but again they're not gonna do what I want so <laughs> it doesn't matter well we could tell them hey call us we we, we, we want some input give us a call we, we'll yeah. <laughs> we'll all throw our two cents into the bucket <laughs> I, I will definitely well. answer the call. As long as Michael Emerson's involved and yeah. you know a few of the main characters, that would be nice to see somehow, you know. Yeah. And maybe a uh, guest appearances, but uh, mm -hmm. to do it, I think they have to just start from scratch. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I mean, well, depending on what's it, depending on which direction they're going to go, if they're doing it yeah. after right. the Arlosties, then yeah, you could have Michael Emerson and you know uh, all the other characters that didn't move on. I guess they could have them, but uh, uh, we'll see. Um, like we start the show every time, Anil, tell us how you got into Lost. How did you start the o uh, ODI podcast? Tell us your history. Well, bank accounts, good. everything like that. No okay. no, <laughs> no phone numbers. No <laughs> <laughs> um, I always told people, whoever my podcast partner was at the time, if there's any hate mail or emails, and I still uh, help. We used to. We were recently doing the Spoiler TV podcast. That's a little plug. I know you said you have any plugs, but um, whoever sends hate mail, I would always say send it to Karen and Danny or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, never, never I got it. a lot of hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> but good old MySpace. You know, I would say right away, season one to the mystery started building right around these episodes that we're going to discuss you know it starts to really grab you and you want to start going looking and talking to friends and it started building that community and many of my friends they were into sci-fi but not something like this watching a show so religiously and trying to solve the puzzle and i can't remember who it was or i just happened to be on myspace at the time in the early days and i found a forum for lost and the rest is really history. I start building the friendships. And I know in the previous podcast, you guys have talked about community. And it's at like every one of us, anyone I've ever spoken to, any fan has always talked about the lost community and the bond. Like you hear fandoms today, they're ready to fight, 
divisive. Like there's good people who are love it and hate it, like Game of Thrones or the new Star Wars movies. Anything lost is you pretty much unanimous love for one another. Whether you like the ending or not, that's a d- debatable thing. But we all have this really big bond and community that has changed our lives, you know, for the better. And um, so just chatting on MySpace, I started kind of becoming more involved on a regular basis. And somewhere along the way, some of the theories were, of course, out there and outrageous. And somebody (laughs) posted one day, hey, you know what? There's a lot of color orange in the show. And people annihilated her, annihilated her in the group. And I just kind of like, I had a chuckle and I actually started looking at it. And I started doing some research behind the color orange in film and TV in Hollywood. And it goes back to The Godfather when the horse's head was in the bed. There's a bowl of oranges on the the nightstand, and it, right, signified, yeah. it signified caution and danger. So I said, hmm, maybe there's something to this. And around the time, I was actually part of this huge group ban because there's all this nonsense and hate going online. People are getting adjusted. So I came back as an alias DODI, the Orange Dharma Initiative. Ah, yeah. So that's the history of the ODI, and nobody knew it was me. And I started posting all these references. I went back to episode one and had screenshots from all the various fan sites and mid-lost media sites and anything that had orange just so we could see, is there a link? And lo and behold, all of a sudden, you start to see some things that are very interesting. And then Linus, when we first see him, he's wearing an orange shirt. shirt. And the episode we're going to talk about right now, Hearts and Minds, Kate's wearing an orange shirt. shirt. Right. And there's a little caution because now by this point in the uh, season, Kate's got this dual side to her that we're still learning learning about her history. So that's really the birth of the ODI moniker. Start posting more and more, and I would repeat myself, and someone along the way was like, hey, you need to start your own blog. I'm like, I don't have time. I'm sorry. And <laughs> the guy's like, it's on MySpace. There's already a blog platform. So I did that, and the first day I had 1,000 views. Wow, it was nice. like a little eye opener, you know, and I was like, well, what's this is interesting. So that's what kind of got me started. And then the guy was like, hey, you need to start your own website. I'm like, I don't have time to do that. So he actually <laughs> helped build the website for me. And so we started posting content and media and videos and recaps. And then eventually it's a lot of writing. It's a lot of recapping. And I said, I got to do this podcast because I just want to talk about it versus writing. Right. And the first day of the website um, and had stat tracking, all of a sudden I realized how big Lost was because 90% of the views on the blog came from international viewers. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah, and at that time, no one thought about TV as a global phenomenon. And that's what Lost did. It has changed the TV and media and how we consume it and view it forever because That was where I got an eye opener. And as everybody says, it changed your life. I actually got into social media marketing, digital marketing, e-commerce, actually had a career for eight, nine years. Now I've got my own business, but like I was able to use what I learned hands-on doing the blog, doing the podcasting, and then convert it into career. So that's where it's all about. At, At our high point in season six, we were getting, you know, 50,000 weekly downloads and yeah. I know you guys were way bigger than us but like it was yeah. just just to see that you we know? were happy to just know that people yeah. were listening and yeah. saying yeah. okay whether they were liking what we said or not it was just so thrilling to know we were engaging people in one way or another and um, if anything just giving them a little different aspect to things but we were just thrilled people were listening <laughs> And we had long format with three of yeah we had long we had long format podcasts with three of us each having our own different views and opinions the craziness from each one of us and I was (laughs) editing it and actually well let's not get ridiculous now I own that title (laughs) (laughs) no comment. But I, I like you're saying about people listening. I think our first podcast had 60 listeners. See? And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. And then when you were talking about negative emails and stuff like that, because and Jay said, he goes, 
Well, we'll start getting people who have a thing where they can sense it. I go, wait, they're going to comment on what we're doing? I don't want that. Right. No, no, no. <laughs> you do, you know, you, you, for every person that doesn't like what you do, like you said, you had 50,000 listeners. So it's like, you know, so five people didn't like you. So what? Yeah. I mean, you, just, yeah. you don't have to have that kind of. You can't let it affect you. No, you no. Know, you, just, you build just, up a t- you build up a tough tough skin to it, and you, you people get to hide behind the internet, and you know, kind of spew a little bit. But still, you don't you don't let it get to you. They don't. It's not a personal thing. They don't know who we are behind the podcast. You know, they right. don't know all of that. But they're just you know. But still, you just are so thrilled that, like you said, if you have a couple of haters, but then you have so many more that are just like. Oh wow! This this was a really great point you guys brought up, or right. you know something to that effect. So it just kept engaging people, and that's all we wanted. Plus, it was and, fun to talk about. I mean, it just was no, definitely. Yeah. And the other a couple of things that there's those moments where you said like, okay, you see the like I said that first eight thousand views or the number of listeners. There's a few other moments through that time over the years that I was like, wow, this is crazy. We've really made it in the sense like we've penetrated as fans into traditional media and actually them understanding. And part of the reason why ODI and I was up with Andy and the dark UFO was the spoiler side of the fan base that wanted right. the spoilers and what's known. So we had this little controversial side to us. And I still remember between season uh, three and four entertainment weekly had a huge write up. That was like their feature before the season started. And it was about spoiler culture. And I was referenced by the writer as Mr. The ODI causing controversy <laughs> online. With, oh, you, you. Right? So like <laughs> those little moments start happening and you're like, wow, this is crazy. And that's actually why my email at the time was Mr. The ODI at Gmail. So I gave my email out. It's no longer, I don't use it that much, but it was just kind of cool moments. I, one final yeah. little story, season six, when uh, Karen had come out to the West Coast and we went to some events, we were chatting and someone turned around and goes, Wait, are you the ODI? Are you Karen from the ODI podcast? Just our voice. <laughs> they just they just heard our voices and realized yeah. that's who we were. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it's what, funny. When, it is fun when you get recognized, isn't it? Yeah, yeah like, it's it, neat. You know, it's just kind of like it's a little humbling to you know you you feel like okay, and then they they the fans have been all so great because we're just fans and they're fans and but they kind of like held us at this little higher and we're like no, we're just like you and. No, but like yeah. no different. Yeah. So. I, I, my favorite story is I was at Comic Con and uh, somebody was wearing one of our Jane Jack shirts. Nice. So I'm sitting there. I'm just, I'm just sitting there. I go, yeah, it's a nice shirt. And he goes, yeah, it's a podcast I listen to. And I said, all right, cool. <laughs> and they walked away. <laughs> I go, okay. At least you bought the shirt. I got, I got, some, I got a little bit from that. So it's okay. You didn't have video podcasting then. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. But it is what it is. It's probably better off anyway. But it, it just uh, cool. every time yeah. someone tells that story, I re- I'll always remember that. Just going, oh, okay. That's At awesome. least you didn't say some crappy podcast I listened to. That. <laughs> I, I guess, I guess that would have been worse. But uh, no, it's just I was, I was wondering though. You, you, you talk about how lost and how. Uh, it, so many lost podcasts at the time were, at, especially season six, were at the top of the iTunes charts. Do you think yes. that I never really thought about it, but do you think that's the reason so many actors and people in Hollywood got involved in podcasting because they saw, hey, look at these fan based podcasts, what they're doing. I already have a name. Yes. You know, like Adam Carolla or some, some of these other people that yes. have a name. Do you think they saw oh, all these lost podcasts are in the top 20? Yes. There was that- podcasting prior to us starting podcasting. Yeah, iTunes right. had the podcast list. Nobody knew. Many people didn't know what to do with podcasts. It was content, radio rebroadcasting, um, news media, um, very genre based. And so I think nobody knew how to monetize it as well. I think there was a back then, even with us, it was very difficult to monetize. And it's somewhere along the way it changed. But I really think the fandoms whether it was just podcasting but blogging look at today look yeah. at the media and how it's consumed twitter right. i i was one of the first people on facebook when i was college i mean yeah. myspace i was one of the first people on twitter we were uh, the fandom lost and whoever else was starting out at that time heroes was very big chuck was very big but not nothing so big but people start tweeting about shows instantly live immediately after. And I think the media companies really realize, 
oh my god there's a lot of money that could right. be made right. through this aspect and that's when as you said people with names realize okay now everybody has a podcast right i mean i i listen to sports talk shows every sports talk show host has their own additional not just a rebroadcast of the show but they have an additional podcast right. because they know they can get that ad revenue and it's more long format versus keeping short interviews like 10 minutes and now you can explore something so i definitely think that's one aspect when you always hear about stories and articles about how lost changed tv but lost and lost fandom changing really the way everybody interacts with media media in general yeah yeah, yeah. It, it it just exploded and it just yeah. was like it was just because other amazing. TV shows start doing it right other fans right. start doing it for other shows and like i said the global aspect when i met dark ufo andy and um i had no idea it was based in the uk and that was just my mind was absolutely shattered everything i had ever thought about was like okay here's this website this guy's got this tremendous content he's got these spoilers and i had this contact that was providing me details. So I just sent an email. I said, hey, I got this information. Is this, how do you handle this? And find out this guy's based in the UK with millions and millions of followers on a daily basis. I'm just like, wait, the show's an L a US based show filmed in Hawaii and you're in the UK. And then you like, really it starts to rattle in your head, like how global it is. Lostzilla.net and every country had its own Spain, Greece, every country had its own fan base for Lost and home right. fan, uh, fan mm -hmm. sites. Yeah. And it was just, um, I mean, from you guys to Ryan and Jen in Hawaii to the Fuselage to Doc Arts to Karen had her own thing on MySpace and Karen. I had, had my that, blog. Uh, yeah, yeah, my blog was just starting yeah. then. It's like, how do you even get that going? It's a lot of writing, and it was I, I detailed episodes and recapped and gave my own two cents and stuff. But it was a lot of writing, and then we would, it was a it was a nil that kind of nudged me to say you need to keep doing this because you're paying attention and people want to read what you have. And I was I fought him for a while on it. I'm <laughs> like, why why does anybody want to read my notes? Because my site was not written as if it was, oh, I wrote an article yeah. or anything right. like that, okay? It literally was my handwritten notes as if you were in class jotting down every other word, you know, whatever, every other word or just blurbs <laughs> of things. So I'm like, who's going to want to read my just notes? And I think that that's what made it a little bit more unique was because it was raw and it was exactly right. the way that I put it out there. And and it grew over those years. It grew, but that's what we, we also, it also helped me, I think be a better podcast partner in the ODI. Um, and that was helpful because I was always prepared. You were a star from day one. <laughs> I you was were prepared. <laughs> no, you were a rock star before you started this. Don't forget that. I, I just took a lot of obsessive notes. <laughs> that's all. Which we have for tonight's episode. Yes, right? we have notes. <laughs> well, that's we good. Do. Are you guys ready to get into the first episode? Sure, yes. It's we funny because I've talked about this every week. I kind of forget some of the stuff. Yeah. Like you forget what order you, you remember what you remember the scenes. Yes. But what episode was it in? And I go, oh, that's right. This was in that one. That's what oh, this was in that. And I, oh, well, that was because I was talking with Ralph and Chris last week or a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. But it was, uh, there was something that happened. I go, yeah, I forgot that happened so early in yeah. the hatch, yeah. the fun, you know, Lock and John, uh, Lock, Lock and Boone finding the hatch. It was like, yeah. I forgot it happened that early. Yeah. But anyway, let's get into hearts and minds. What are your thoughts? Um, about okay. the episode, any, any, uh, there's a lot, there's about? a lot of thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, well, first of all, I think you had mentioned Jack that you had uh, not really gone back and done like a rewatch until you really kind of started this. And I've watched sporadic. It's been about episodes. four years. It's been yeah. about four years. But I have not watched these episodes maybe for 10 plus years. It's uh, like I don't even know you know. people. <laughs> <laughs> no, because What's going on? <laughs> forget, like, once the show stops, then life happens. I have two kids now. And, you know, I mean, it's not, and I, I kind of remember it. And we have these other discussions with Karen. And so, but like watching specific episodes like Hearts and Minds and Special, I mean, I haven't seen these episodes in years. So I was really watching this with a fresh eye. And the episodes hold up, as you mentioned in prior uh, podcasts, the quality and what have you but learning all these different clues and seeing john locke in his mysterious ways and this smoke monster and what's going on oh 
Okay, Karen, I'm, I'm excited. You <laughs> no, that's okay. It is exciting. <laughs> yeah. It is exciting. Um, well, because this episode, we, we, we're seeing the pain of the heart fighting with logic, literally, hearts and minds. And that's that's what this is really engulfing. Yeah. Um, and again, th no secret, they're learning to let go of the emotional pain, hurt and attachments. Um, is It seems to be the goal of what's happening on the island. Okay, so a couple of key things to point out. And Jack, stop me if you've got these on your list as well. Uh, Boone sees Sawyer in the background at the Sydney police station. Yeah. That's pretty important. So yeah. we have our flashback yeah. and we're already starting to see that there are connections being made that again, things are not what we think they are or what it seems all of a sudden they're connected. You know, was that, I, our I did first, make a, was that our first, because I haven't watched the other recent ones. No, we had, um, there was one prior. I think there was one prior to that. Oh, okay. I'm trying to remember, like they're all kind of, but I did want to yeah. say, I did, I did watch Boone's face to see if he actually looked at Sawyer. Yeah, right. Yeah. He just kind of was like, he knew he yeah. was there. That was more yes. for us to know right. that he was there. Because you, oh, how did you not recognize him? But, yeah. but, right. But, right. But they, they did a great job of, you know, they knew ahead of time what they were going to do. Yep. So, but I'm watching this going, okay, did he see him? Did he see him? Okay. No, he didn't. Right. Right. Another little blurb that just happens while he's in the police station is uh, we discover Shannon was married, but she's not married anymore. Obviously, right. that meant nothing in the long scheme of things, but it was worth noting. Um, that it's not his real sister? It's, well, we know that. Uh, we know yeah. that they're stepsister. Yeah, they're they're yeah, step. Stepsister. They're yeah, step. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, uh, we, we find that Boone's issue with Shannon, because this we start to see Shannon. We know she's a, she's a manipulator and she uses people in a way to help her survive. We That's pretty much been established. Right. Um, but she also has a hold over Boone because she knows that he's in love with her. Right. So she uses that to her advantage through their whole relationship. Um, and Boone is obsessively in love with her. In some way, he's got this attachment to her. So he unfortunately likes to just be there to rescue her. But we're seeing here too in the flash that he's getting annoyed with it. He's getting annoyed. I'm paying off another guy to right. you know, leave my sister. I'm, I'm coming to rescue you again and this and that. And then they have an intimate moment together and she tells him, we're just gonna forget this never happened. And when he says, sure, like it's all up to you, I think was finally his point where he realizes, what am I doing here? I've, this, is, right. this is bull. She's pulling all the strings, so to speak. So I think for me, when we get to the part where Locke gives Boone this experience. Was it Locke or Smokey? It was Locke. No, it was Locke. It was Locke. <laughs> he, he gave him the wacky paste. He gave, yes, he he gave him the paste. Yes, so I kind of feel that, that obviously that's the, a, the big part of that because this episode about the – He's try he knows he has to help Boone. He knows he he's got to find a way to nudge Boone to let and go he of says, Jen. Let, go. let it go. Right, yeah. right. So through this experience that Boone ends up having with his halluc hallucination and everything, um, he does still try to save Shannon. He, you know, they the monsters after them in this hallucination. Um Again, with the monster sounds, I wanted to point out was we hear the monster sounds and stuff, but we also hear wings fluttering. Birds, so yeah. There's the bird. The bird yeah. element is tied into that, so that that Early kind bird. of it kind of brings me back to my whole enlightenment theme that where this path leads them to enlightenment. Anyway, so long story short, um, it's very telling that by the time Boone meets back up with Locke, thinking Shannon is dead, um, that the key thing to that is Locke helped him let go because Boone felt relieved. He said, Boone, uh, Locke asked him, when she died, how did it make you feel? And, and Boone said, relieved. Right. So right then and there, he let it go. Yeah. Right then and there. So Locke, again, is special because on the island, he does help people. He helps he helped Charlie. He does try to help people reach these certain in goals on the way. path. Right. In a unique way on the path to learn to let go. And in this instance, he did a hell of a job with Boone. 
So I don't know if I'd want to be tied up and hit in the back of the head and have wacky pace. Maybe just. Do you think? Do you think Locke helped Boone because he couldn't help himself because he could get over the obsession with his dad? Well, it could be. You know, sometimes, and and we see this again in season six. This kind of mirror is what we see later on. Is Jack and Locke not? being able to ultimately let go of things. They right. needed each other to help each other to let go. So yeah, in many regards, Locke was, isn't ready to let go of certain things of his past and life either, but he does know I have a way to help someone else right now. So maybe in his, in his helping, he's inching his way towards maybe it may take him six seasons, but helping <laughs> him. No. Yeah. He's, yeah. you know, he'll, he'll learn to, you know, but, you need you. Nobody does it alone. You. That's the thing is you need help to reach. You need these motive, steps. proper motivation. Proper motivation. That's what I put down as one of my um, notes. Yeah, yeah. So um, I just think that 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 whole experience that Locke gave him was told us a whole lot of answers about how special Locke is, and that he does know he's there for a purpose and a reason. He just kind of doesn't know how to. As things go on, he gets. Dist- we talked about this, and when I was on last time, he gets distracted. But right. in this instance, he did help Boone. So that I was think cool. So. There's some really cool, interesting things now uh, with the show at this point in season one. Um, a lot of people uh, talk about, oh, they made it up along the way. You can start to actually see some of the groundwork that they were laying down for the long term. Mm-hmm. That there was a plan. Um, also, it was early on that they had only planned 13 episodes before it became a phenomenon after that first night. And so to kind of think this is in that point where it might have the show ended, you're like kind of curious, like, wow, how they could have uh, closed the story within 13, 14 episodes, almost impossible. But at least now we actually understand that they actually start putting in tidbits about how they're trying to survive, how to start to make food, uh, get food, and Sun's got her farm, and they're looking right. for seeds, yeah. and Hurley's learning to fish with Jin. So you start to see life taking place, which then mm-hmm. also leads into the next episode, which we'll get to about, about the raft and what have you, whether they're staying and wanting to go. So you actually start to see this groundwork, and like you said, you kind of forget how quick and early that happened in the show mm-hmm. um when well, now i'm watching back i'm just like wow that's kind of kind of neat to just see those elements that were in play yep well talking it, about go ahead. go ahead go ahead i was gonna say do you think it was a big mistake for uh, boone to threaten saeed well, yeah, because Locke wanted to make sure that they didn't make an enemy out of him. That's what he said. We need him. <laughs> we need him. We don't want to make an enemy, an enemy out I, of him. I remember saying he breaking some of his neck with his feet. So his yes. legs. So, How about uh, we need him on our side? <laughs> right. right. Now, Locke early on knows about maybe having sides and, you know, being able to mm-hmm. have uh, power in numbers and what have you. One thing I thought was kind of neat was the moment when Locke kind of walks up on Saeed when Saeed's trying to build the compass. Mm-hmm. Right? He's like, yeah. you snuck up on me, and he goes, I'm kind of sneaky. Sneakier, like, than, right, sneakier than I give myself credit for or something yeah. like that, yeah. <laughs> Maybe he is a smoke monster at that moment. Mm. Maybe. <laughs> but what's interesting is he gives Saeed his compass. compass that he doesn't yeah. need anymore because yeah. he knows where he's going on yeah. the path. Um, and that How compass- does he know? Well, that compass in turn ends up not really pointing true north. So metaphorically, are you trying to tell us that it's Locke's compass that's a little off, off. or all of them, their their compass, their own compass, metaphorically, is off a little bit? Obviously, we know the island has issues and but magnetic again, anomalies, I think this is but Locke still. trying to help. I think this is He Locke is trying to help. Right He's trying to give that compass to him, right. whether he... You take it both sides. You can take it as a fan and say, Locke doesn't know anything about this compass not being triangulated properly and working mm-hmm. pro- properly magnetically and honestly wanting to help right. Saeed. Yeah. But I, I take it more as in he knows it's not properly working and he wants to give that piece of element to Saeed as a clue to say, mm-hmm. oh, this guy's smart enough to understand that this compass is off and there's something more at right. play in this island. Good. So that's how we take Good. it. And mm-hmm. so that's him helping. And yep. uh, so I think that's continuing that theme right there. Absolutely. Do you think that Locke, when he says we need to Saeed on our side, was already understanding that he was going to have friction with Jack? I mean, they already had 
some run-ins that, that he needed. He was going to get the numbers in case Jack didn't do what he wanted to do. Man of faith versus man of science. Exactly. So they were setting it. I think they were setting it up from the beginning when he, you know, he makes that comment. We need Saeed on our side because mm -hmm. we need to have the numbers. And I think he knew down the road that Jack was going to be, they were going to hit heads, which they did over and over again. And they also have that. I can't remember now because I watched both these episodes back to back. Was it this one or <laughs> is it in special? I think it was in special. We'll get there where, you know, Jack finally goes and talks to Locke and says, okay, what's going on? You guys have been going out there. And so I think they definitely let the, laid the groundwork for this uh, man in black versus man in white. Good it was this people. episode. It was yeah, it was this episode because I yeah, I think at that it was at that point that because Jack got conflicting stories about yes. Locke seeing Boone that day because Said yes, said, yes, Oh, yes. he saw him in the woods and then Locke kind of lies to him and says, I didn't see him at all today. Yeah. So now yeah, right. now now Jack is like, Okay, this guy didn't even just tell me the truth. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So there's gonna always be that uh, that friction. But I love well, I, there's a ahead. little moment, sorry, uh about Charlie and having faith mm -hmm. in Locke. And I thought that's very important because now knowing six seasons later how uh, Lindelof and Q's right, you understand these are key words that they're using to kind of plant for the long term. So that's another yeah. point of man of faith. So. Yep. Well, Charlie just, felt that, that Locke was going to be the one that could save them all. That's right. how he felt. He did. So, yeah. Because he tells Jack to, because I think Jack you know, was, I, was it, I don't know if it's this episode or the next where they had the talk where Jack, but he says, there's no one on the island I'd rather I trust, him yeah. more, trust more to save yeah. me than John Locke. And Jack's like going, you can think in his head, I've done all this stuff and you're, you're giving it to Poor Locke. Jack. Poor Jack. <laughs> Poor Jack. <laughs> I'm sewing people no up. I'm chasing no, after. No wonder he's an alcoholic. Oh, yeah. how, I would have said, how many times have I saved you, Charlie? How many yeah. times? Yeah. I'm You're also from a hey, tree. No, when he tells him that he's also helping him get over his heroin addiction at that moment. So. Right. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So I'd, I'd be a little upset if I was, I, I was going to say the thing that always bothered me about this show. And I know it's good for storyline is mm. if I found something in the jungle that like a hatch, I'm not going to keep it a secret. No. Right. Exactly. I'm going to get as many people as I can to figure out how to get that thing open because it could be something to save us. But at this, as throughout the show, we find out that they keep secrets from each other, right? And they don't trust each other, which is. Let, if that, it, I think it actually if, goes to Locke's character. Sorry, Karen, right. because no. that is Locke on a mission, and Locke knowing what happened off island with him, and don't tell me what I can't do. And right. I right. think that's him feeling like he's put here for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Why did they find this hatch? And eventually, they all get to a point where they find out. But I agree with you. I mean, I'm I'm more in the camp of like. Let's all do this together, and mm -hmm. you know, so. well, you can you can understand Locke being a little not trustworthy because his dad stole his kidney, and then just you know, you can understand if you the, the backstory of Locke is his backstories are the best because it really defines who he is on the island. And so you can I you know I'm complaining about it, but you can see why he wouldn't trust anybody else because yeah. his dad stole his. I mean, he has trust was, issues. He does. <laughs> <Daddy> <laughs> <laughs> they all have daddy issues. They do, but it just, uh, I get it, but it just, to me, it's like, God, can you tell somebody? <laughs> Saeed or someone can figure out how to get right? that thing open. Yeah. And yeah. Boone tried to tell Shannon, he couldn't. No. no, no, not allowed. Another important thing that we discover is, well, we've already learned it, but now, now um, it is comes out to another castaway that son knows English, English and can right. speak English. Okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So at this point now, you know, how long can that stay in the bag? Because, <laughs> yeah. and I remember uh, a lot of analogies. And I think one Damon is like, it's like an onion. You keep peeling back yes. layers. The show is like an onion. And each one of these characters is like an onion. So right. there's one layer of sun peeling down, and yes. they all have facades when they come to the island. There's somebody yeah. else off island. There's somebody else. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like, the island was a reset for them to find themselves and find their exactly. way through the season. Right. And, and so. we all have, we all have um, uh, multiple facets to our own selves. And obviously we'll learn a little bit about that. And when we talk about special, but that's, that's the thing is we, but that's how we all relate. We all are. Show, right. We all are right. because we all long for a chance to start over or do something oh, yeah. different with our lives, change careers, you know, 
divorce this Walk one, again. marry somebody else. <laughs> <Walk again. laughs> you know, Be that um, hunter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But um, as much as we got, you know, all those things we do see, like you, you did not touch on this and it was, uh, you know, Hurley finally finding some peace with gin and them making up and stuff like that. But, uh, which was a whole, great scene. It was really great because we loved them two together and Hurley's adorable, <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, but, uh, the whole part about your, but hearts and minds as we see that, that, that was the epitome of, of Boone. In other words, logic was not allowing him to overtake his heart. He Love this girl. He awful. knew. He knew what she makes was you made. Blind. Love but me he. Awful. But he knows who she is. He knows she uses people. He know. But he still loved her. But he had to let. He had to stop being so attached to her, and and Mister Locke helped. And we keep yeah. seeing Thaid's uh, relationship with her growing. Right. You know, yes. all these like little tidbits and pieces keep happening, and you're just right. like, well, that's kind of neat, and that's right. kind of cool to see. Right. I actually liked uh, in the hallucination scene at the end. Obviously, we as the fan watching the show back then, I kind of now watched it, and I remember that night watching. I'm like, no, they already killed Shannon. <laughs> what? <laughs> right? So like, and, and and then it that, then it eventually does happen. But like, you're just like. That was our first kind of major fake out character death. And it now happens on every TV show, right. every season. And yeah. it, the cliffhangers that yeah. Loth allowed to kind of keep building upon week to week and make this is what it made water cooler TV, made right. digital water water cooler right. and you know, social media TV. So like these are those key moments. And the next episode has one too. And it's just right. kind of exactly. Yeah. I find it important too that when 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 Boone connects with Locke after the hallucination and everything. Mm -hmm. And Boone asks him what just happened, what was like all that, you know? And uh, they talk about reality for a second, that it was only as real as he made it and mm -hmm. all that. But Locke's phrase to him was, I gave you an experience and uh, something to the effect of it was uh, important to your survival uh, on the island or something to that. Uh, uh, it's, it was important about this, your survival on the island. So what I found interesting about that is I think Locke really believed that this was going to be about that, about helping him survive. Um, yet we know what happens to Boone. I love some of the wording Locke also uses. Is that, yeah. is that what it made you see? Is yeah. that what it like? Is that but, what... Yeah. The right. smoke, it was because that what the, yeah. his reality was all mished together and he's that's what his hallucination was i'm going to rescue her that's what he did in real life i have to go rescue her again right um so it's funny because shannon says in the hallucination what'd you do to piss him off P piss off lock <laughs> you know like why would she bring up lock <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so but uh i i love this episode i love when they give us that little bit of uh, what's going on in their heads, whether it be real, contrived, uh, alcohol-induced, drug-induced, wacky paste-induced, sweat lodge-induced. Those right. things are, I find very, very important. And I think we get a lot of uh, reveal and answers within those. I agree. I was going to say, too, with the lock, he, he did the same thing with Charlie. I mean, he didn't tie him up and give him, you know, right. like, knock him on the head, but he said... But he gave him a life lesson. <laughs> yeah, he said, you know, if you ask me three times, I will give this to you. He could have easily just taken it and thrown it in the fire. You're done. Absolutely. You're not, but, he, but Charlie had to decide it was his... He wanted to kick the habit. So right. yeah, that's why season one, we I, I love Locke. I, yeah. I love... He's done some, you know, he hit say in the head. There's things he's done that <laughs> upset me. And later on, I, I, yeah, I get really frustrated with him because, you know, he's Locke, but... uh. Yeah, the first season, you can't help but love the guy. I mean, yeah, I would say there are fans for each character, but like the Locke fandom is probably yeah. the largest and strongest. I mean, I know there's Sawyer and I know there's Jack and yeah, forget I'm, I'm a Locke. Forget forget the shippers, but like I think the yeah. the Locke fandom, just individual characters, obviously. We have Desmond uh, as my favorite character, but I think that Locke's right there, and I think uh, he, from day one all the way throughout the show, he was the shining star, and along with Jack, you know, it doesn't work without him. Yeah, right. it doesn't work without his character. No, not at all. Impossible. Yeah. Are you guys ready to move on to special? Sure. Yes. 
Yeah. I, and, I can't believe I took a lot of notes for special. Yes. I, I, I couldn't cool. believe I, I took many notes. But anyway, let's start with special and your thoughts on uh, poor Michael. Walt! <laughs> <laughs> That's where it started. It's yeah. the birth of Walt. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember this episode very clearly, but watching it back, I had forgotten so much about the, the Michael flashback, let's say, or right. the off island. And I remember the Walt moments and the polar bear moments and the comic book and the bird hitting the window and the whole re rhyme and reason behind the title being special. But this is, besides a smoke monster, we knew something was up. And back then, everybody was like, is it a dinosaur? What is it? This and that. This is where you start to really get into the supernatural aspect. And I don't know. This was probably also maybe in hindsight, one of the mistakes the show made or the writers kind of made because they didn't anticipate being on the show so long and Walt, the actor, growing so quickly because right. they had big plans for him. This episode laid that groundwork for him and they wanted him to play a big role because of him being special. And he grew so quick and so fast, they had to kind of scrap that along the way and right. kind of change it up. So I, I think Damn it's kind kids. of <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> neat to go back and like see that now and how it was laid in uh but wow what a fun episode and a yeah, unique episode um to kind of as a father now i wrote this down the notes uh, like one I, I i underlined it like i actually when i watch the show back then and even michael as a character i think many fans were like eh, on michael and he's not the best dad or he's kind of like the not making the best decisions but now i see like putting myself in his shoes and just like oh the pain and the hurt watching mm. you know brian porter wanting to like at the end say no i you know hey uh susan wanted you to <laughs> take care of walt and, you can oh, have him uh, back <laughs> and first of all him being pulled away and oh my god it pulled at my heartstrings karen and uh oh, just well to find, to find out that that you know all michael wanted was walt in his life yeah. and brian didn't want him at all yeah but Brian had his first, you know, first what nine years of Walt's life. He had him, yeah. and it just it was it was a messed up situation. It, it's almost right. why you can see why he. It's like what? Why was he so upset? Because before you watch this episode, you're like, why is he so angry at at, at Locke? And you can see it. He was worried about losing. He was threatened. Walt again. He was, yeah, he was yeah. threatened. Yeah. And this episode did a great job of showing that. Okay, I Perfect. get it now. But Perfect. again, see, th here's here's a, a, another example of. Uh, Locke trying to help people. I right. mean, Locke, Locke found the damn dog and brought it back to Michael in, in <laughs> the beginning. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's can't. He, how much does he have to do to prove to Michael that he's trying to be nice and help? Um, but this episode too it gave us a a a view of how special Locke is. He, that he gets to take time to uh, show Walt how to throw knives that are not in a tree, but. It's not just throwing knives that are not in a tree. It's about um, proper motivation. Well, proper motivation, but also opening your mind, seeing the path. He's teaching him how to use uh, things that are bigger than him. Yeah, right. But it's it's things bigger than him, and it's really cool to see that he was trying to nurture that in him. And uh, again, Michael felt threatened and said, "No way, no, that's not happening." So does Walt have but, superpowers, Karen? He, it's not superpowers, no. <laughs> Supernatural powers. He just was more ability. open. Ability. He was more open-minded to uh, things. <laughs> so well, I think that, that enables you to do things. Scientists say, you know, we only use a certain, a very, very yep. minor part of our brain, and if we're able to tap into even one percent more, we've actually gained yeah. these super abilities. And the folks that have like super strength and endurance no. and whatever are those. So in a sense, like this island magnetically was making some changes and right. affecting people. And Walt had something off island, which then was enhanced. And mm -hmm. Locke realized because of his experience that if he could just make people open their eyes and right. look at the path, and that's how Walt was able to. Throw. Well, how do you feel about this, guys? So we 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 see that Locke wants everyone that they were all brought there for a reason. We had this speech. We were all brought here for a reason. Well, but that didn't right. happen yet. We didn't happen. We just know that that's the case. Okay. Um, that comes later, but he still does know that they were all there. We came here, miracles happened, mm -hmm. wonderful things happened. So we all must belong here for right now for a reason. So Locke doesn't want anybody to leave the Island because he knows that 
whatever they all need to do to heal has to happen on this island. And the person that is clamoring to get the heck off the island is Michael. Right. Michael doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to grow and he doesn't want to let go of Walt because he wants to take Walt with him. I just want to take him. He doesn't want to lose Walt. Again. Right, right. So, yeah. so that's kind of, you know, closing well, like off I, the whole idea of. I, kind of, of I understood what his thought process was. Right. Like, you guys are as like a, accepting a being here. You're accepting being here. You're accepting like. No, like, let's do something. We right. need to get off this island. This is not our home. I right. missed nine years of my life with my son, and I don't want to spend the rest nine yeah. years or 19, 20, the rest of my life with my son on this island having to deal with, uh, you know, these type of situations. So. Well, he even says, I think he says, I, I don't want him being he, raised here. Yeah, um, he can't grow up here. Yeah. He can't grow up here, which yeah. is... I, and I always liked Michael when he, I always said, I go, yeah, he's the only one sitting there, you know, we're building this uh, uh, showers right. and all those different things. Yes. Instead of figuring out a way to get off the <laughs> island. And I said, come on, Gillian, we got to mail the raft. <laughs> exactly. So I always, I always applauded Michael for that. Yes. I said, mm -hmm. yeah, you, you're yeah. doing the right thing. We found out later on he can't, but he was going to, and then we find out later on, he does get off the island with Walt. Yeah. So it didn't work out so well. No. <laughs> <laughs> Quick question before we go further into the, the episode. Um, do you, how, how does Walt, oh, sorry, how does Locke know that Walt might be able to open up his mind and is open uh, to kind of being taught about opening Probably up? Probably because he's and, a child. Ch children yeah. are not jaded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, children are not jaded until adults jade them. So um, probably why he picked Boone. Yes, yeah, because, yeah. because Boone was young and precious. Mm -hmm. Boone could be older. and and had and had a purer heart and a clearer mind. You know, everybody's everybody was, is flawed. Everybody's and Charlie's flawed, young but, and vulnerable. Right. Vulnerable. Yeah. Right, and they were they were ready for certain. Uh, they were ready for things to to let go of at that point. So maybe he right. he he saw that. Okay, you know what this. This one has an addiction. I can help him with this. This one, I can see he's attached to his stepsister unhealthily. You know, how could we address that? And he found right. a way to get to that. And Walt does have potential. And he wants and to help in that. And has issues like locked it. Well, yes, of yeah. course. <laughs> yeah. So he Plus him and, my, him and Michael, I'm not him and Michael, him and Locke, John, had, Walt and Locke had talked a lot. Yes. Yes. I mean, so they, because he even says, he goes, Built the bond, he, right? he, he listens to me. Yes. You don't I, listen to me. Right. Yes. Right. And, and he talks to him like an equal, not a child, you know? Right. Um, so a lot of that uh, communication things Michael doesn't have, he didn't, he doesn't know how to be that to right. Walt, you know? So, but just like he, he, parent, his, his Walt was, he was, he, he was a baby, yeah. you know? So that's all he remembers. Right. Exactly. I um, had a couple of notes. Go, yeah. Uh, this is where actually when you start delving into the show, like we were obsessed. Um, <laughs> camera camera angles, yes. things in background, um, those controversial, uh, not controversial, but more like butting heads with Michael and Locke. Locke's angle was always kind of towards looking down towards Michael and more menacing. And so I love the visuals that the writers and the yeah. you know directors were doing with that. I put that as a note. But in the baby wall, was wearing an orange shirt. Mm -hmm. So a little oh. heads up and heads up in caution. And then Michael gets hit by the car. So just a little kind of neat. Yep. Tidbits that I, wrote notes I love that. And I also love too, that when we see the comic book and I kind of ripped this apart and delved into it quite a bit in my blog. And we talked about it at one point too, that um, the comic book shows us literally on the cover, two halves of a whole. Okay. So we're seeing two different beings being brought together to make right. a new being. Uh, and I find that to be part of what our story is like yes. where, 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 you know, it's that whole idea is reflected right in that comic book. And I found it beautiful, actually a nice way to inject that in there. Miss comic lover that I am. <laughs> <laughs> First early reference of comic books and pop culture making its way into um, yeah. the show. Literature, but, as Sawyer literature. later mentioned. That's what right. I like about, when you were talking about the angles of uh, Michael and Locke, I like that Locke didn't threaten him. Yes. L Locke right. just said, he, he listened to him. He mm -hmm. said, okay. You know, he's, 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 I was almost giving him the respect that Michael maybe did deserve or did deserve, but he, he was just like, okay, I'm not going to confront him because if I wanted to, I could kill him. 
Yeah. I mean, if we, it came down to, but he knew that if doing that, he would lose Walt's. Walt. So. And he was trying yeah. to help at the end of the yeah, day. He, 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 he was, was trying to help, yeah. So he was being the patient one. Because he even told, how... even told Locke, said, hey, you need to respect your dad. I love how he's convinced Boone so much that Boone's now his like little sidekick. Like <laughs> <laughs> you got to pick a better defender than Boone, though. No, definitely <laughs> a wingman. <laughs> yeah, Boone's Boone's not a bodyguard. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> poor Boone. Poor Boone. Poor Boone. Ah, uh, no, poor Boone. Well, he has he, now that he's not obsessing over Shannon. He needs something to do, so they'll just keep digging out the hatch. <laughs> yeah, definitely. they haven't got very far, have they? No. no, for working on for five days. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, it just looks like I, it's just the I cover. Mean, but wouldn't you think that digging at that thing for that long, okay, knowing people are starving, waiting for bore, that you'd be like, okay, the universe is telling me not to dig this thing up because I'm just wasting all my time. I'd have walked away and been, Psh, I'm done. But that was <laughs> yeah. always that was always Locke's downfall was the hat. Yes, yes. So, he thought that that was the answer. Right. The button. Yeah. The button, the hatch, yeah. everything. So, Jack, let me ask you a question. Back then, would you think of that whole aspect of the hatch and getting into the show like this, and now having a polar bear like that was like a big uh, talked about thing. Like, um, the, that was the water cooler moment. Like, people were like, besides what happened at the end of the episode, but like, how can there be a polar bear? Is Walt well, bringing this polar bear? You know, I did, I did think that because the comic book had the polar bear, so you're just like going, okay, you know, he they show the scene with the bird was Walt behind the polar bears? We didn't know, or was that just a distraction for the mo- the smoke monster? That to, yeah, like people said, it was a dinosaur. It was it. There were so many different th- yeah. theories on what that thing was. So maybe that was good for them to say, "Oh yeah, polar bears on here. We could have dinosaurs on here. Who know? Who knows?" But I just remember that watching this, going, "What is going on with this? What's going on?" Like I said, the polar bears always until we <laughs> find out the answer always frustrated me because there's there's no way they'd be on the island. They threw the fandom for a loop with this yeah. episode. Yeah, they a did. Big loop, a big loop. I just kind of was like watching back now, and I'm like, oh, I remember thinking about everybody going like, what the F is this? Yeah. Plus, you also think in the whole time that, that, that Michael is a bad dad, that he doesn't, he didn't care about well, why wasn't he in his life, what was going on, you know, the whole thing. And even when he, go, he goes and he meets up with, he goes to Australia and meets up with Walt, he doesn't tell him that Brian doesn't want him anymore. Yeah. He takes the blame. Well, you know, he wanted you, but I have custody yeah. and I'm going to take you. Get, make it harder for him, but he did the right thing. Why Why kill the kids? You know, why? Right. He did the right thing. So he was, you know, it, I never blamed him for not being, you know, I always blame Susan for it. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I do think it was her fault that, uh, Selfish. And, she, and she sent, he sent, you know, cards and stuff and never showed him to yeah. Walt. So she didn't want him to have any kind of relationship with him. Which is heartbreaking karma. for both of them, right? Karma. Exactly, karma. Exactly. It, that's a perfect way to show that angle of karma, which we get in our story throughout, often as well. Um, we did uh, touch on, um, well, actually, what we have Claire's diary mm. being an aspect of the story in this episode as well. Mm. Um, Soy has the diary because you know he he needs stuff to read you know but <laughs> but we do find out that uh a couple of tidbits do come out of that is uh that claire feels connected to the black rock mm-hmm. right. we don't know mm-hmm. what that is we no. don't know what that is but she feels connected to the black rock and that charlie How makes cool her is feel it now safe. knowing what it is i know it's awesome <laughs> but different perspective it's, it is a different perspective and that's what i love about what when I watched these originally, and I think why um, everybody did have so many different opinions because it's about perspective. Nobody's perspectives right wrong. It does not. It, there's no rights. There's no wrongs. Everybody's perspective is different. Right. Your your life experience is different. So you're going to see different things. It's, you know, you're now gravitating Anil to the father aspect of the show where you didn't do that. Mm-hmm. 15 years ago. Yeah. So, you know, your perspective changes. And I think that that's why this lost story will never get old for any of us. This is why I think we're going to be able to rewatch it over and over and over because we're always in a different chapter of our own lives and we'll get something from it. So perspective is everything. So, but, uh, but yeah, I thought it was interesting, you know, that uh, those couple of tidbits came out of the diary and that's important. We first hear about Black Rock. 
Loved it. I did. I did like Sawyer when he was reading it. Tisa, what he? Uh, <laughs> I wish this VH1 has been would stop would leave stop bugging you. Something like <laughs> yeah, 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 something yeah. to that effect. It was classic Sawyer. And then yep. it was it was. Uh, he loved pushing buttons. <laughs> yeah, he did. It was it was a great scene. But uh, also, yeah. you're getting more more and more into how developing his character in one little moment of just saying good literature is hard to find, and yeah. we now know you know how much he loved to read. So it's kind of right. interesting to kind of see all that. And that literature. Uh, clues throughout our story were teaching tools for us to figure out what was going on. Right. And that it's just, it's absolute brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> yeah. But special, even though we're, the, the episode was about Michael and Walt. Yes. And we, we, we felt that uh, Walt was special, you know, because Locke is teaching him something. But the, I, I went back and read my blog notes that I wrote back in the original time period when this all aired. Um, that I This is my own thing out of my blog. At this point, the only one I felt that was special is Locke because this episode gave us hints to black, white, and red. Remind, it reminds me of Locke. So when the nurse asks when Michael's drawing the penguin, Yep. And it's a, it's a well, subtle it's, again right it's a subtle right. thing but it's it's parts of I think that 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 weaving the thread that the the writers gave us the same we're tell Locke had a black you know black side white side and he had his red scar through him so that made me instantly think no I kind of think it's Locke that's the special one I, but, I agree but that you know so that that was right out of my own notes from back and then. Now you so. know why I said to keep doing it, and now you know why I said to jump well, on the podcast because I knew you were because <laughs> I knew you were seeing these type of things, Karen. I know, I mean, and you know what? I wouldn't trade any of the hate mail for anything because it still <laughs> it still made my experience work for me, and that's right. that was cool. And I and again, while we are on air, I'm going to say, Anil, you know, I am always very appreciative of you nudging me to continue on with my blog and then to be a partner to the ODI. I just had a, a time of my life. Okay, being part without of all you, that. Okay. Well, yeah. it, it was really great that we got to talk about such depth of the story. Um, so, but now Jack, so did, do you feel that when someone really looks at the background super, super much or kind of goes, oh, this black, white, and red related to this and that did to that. And all these other clues were now starting to evolve as we got into season one. Were you a person that would watch with that kind of depth in that, yeah, I, you know, I, hey, I, I'm seeing what's going on here. I, wa I watch all television beyond. I, I took a, a TV production class in High school back in the back in the fifties. No, back in you're a back liar. In, back, back in the seventies, black and white days. I, I, I didn't get along with the teacher because I had different I had different um, imagination, whatever it was. But he did one thing. He I did learn from him. He goes, watch when you're watching TV, don't watch the story. Watch the, on the story. And so I bought because like my wife and I were watching. I say, well, she goes, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Just watch Downton Abbey the movie, and I pointed out something that she didn't see. That I saw, and I don't want to spoil anybody. It's not, a, it's not, a, it's not a big spoiler, but it's just something that, that I noticed. She goes, I wouldn't even look for that. I go, it's just something I look for, and right. so yeah, I, I, I always kind of did that because I used to take a lot. I used to get a lot of crap for you know theories, and I always said, I go, there is no crate, there's no terrible theories because you don't know, like you right. said, the orange, the lady that took the heat for the, the orange, people, yeah. the orange theory. Right. Just, yeah. How can but how can you right. criticize? Yeah, how can you create? Like, I, I did get a lot of a lot of satisfaction when the underwater hatch was finally shown because I took people said, "Stop talking about this stupid! It, it's not, it doesn't exist." And I just kept going on. I never gave up on it. So I, I, I kept saying, I would send emails back. There is no terrible theories. There aren't when it comes yeah. to the show. We don't know. The same thing happened to me with with one of the things I touched on in my blogs early on, and probably in probably a couple of the early ODI uh, podcasts was that. Um, there, there, there was a game element going on. And it, there was, there was a game element. If you looked at it from that perspective, that doesn't mean that that's what's happened, but just means that that idea was there, but also that things were going on in their heads and things like that. Well, every right. episode said something is, we're telling you this, but also 
computers being involved or this was happening or this is and i'm thinking well by the time we got to season five six we saw room 23 where everything was going on in their heads they right. were programming them they you know this was that was it so i'm like okay the hints were there maybe i had it laid out in the wrong direction but the the hints were still there you're crazy you know, so of course i'm crazy <laughs> <laughs> i know well, look, well looking back on it they even he, they even mentioned one of the numbers because it had been eight years since since uh, Walt had seen Walt. Yes, yes. Michael had seen, Walt. seen Walt. I go, at the time, you don't think anything of it because we don't know about the numbers yeah. yet. But you go back, you said, wow, this isn't the first episode they've thrown the numbers in there. Right, right. And you go, God, they just kept put, they were just boom, boom. They knew. You know, sure, did they make some of the stuff up? They went along, sure. I, I don't yeah, understand that. No. It's storytelling. I'll never, I'll never understand that complaint. I mean, no. a yeah. lot of shows get it. But to me, they were putting the seeds, like you said, someone said right. earlier, they're putting seeds into the story for later on. Well, that thread is getting woven to tell us the whole thing. And and, right. and then and I feel like you do. I mean, I think if a writer and the storytellers and the, the they're trying to tell us a story, it's going to be more than just what the dialogue we hear coming out of their face. It's. Yeah, we get that. We got dialogue. But story is also being told with everything else that's going on in the scene. And, and we, it's there for us to see, pay attention, and um, we, we'll get a fuller picture that way. That's, Speaking of that's very important. There was that artwork that Michael had drawn, that yes. abstract art, that big mural, and we saw how art played a role in the show. Uh, it, the, it did, right. yes. Those are the type of things that you start seeing in the background that now are more of an eye-opener. Um, the other thing, I had one note here. Um, I well, up. I do want to say one of my favorite right. quotes from the show is comes oh, later on, okay. but it's it's this, and it's it. This is what taught me that I, I needed to. I was happy. I was always paying attention to the details. Careful observation is the only key to true and complete awareness. So that quote by Karen DeGroot comes later on, <laughs> but it's mm -hmm. it's it's a pretty telling quote, and yeah. you know, but. All the obsessiveness and making me crazy over it, I tell you, I wouldn't. Tra <laughs> I would comes, not. I would not trade it for anything. Here comes a, a crazy obsessive moment. Do you remember when Michael gets the little box, uh, Susan's yes. box, with yes. the name? Yes. Mm -hmm. That camera angle pointing mm -hmm. upward at the ceiling. All right. Nice, nice little Dharma logo kind of mm -hmm. shape. Up yeah, the that's, at the time, we don't think anything of. No, nothing. Yeah. But I remember. Yeah. I remember when we they the Dharma first was. You brought into the show, people went back and said, "Hey, I remember when Michael was." Because there's even a scene where he's at the end, he's talking with, uh, and I remember people talking about this when he's they're up against the wreckage of the plane by the the cave. Yeah, yeah. And there's a little thing. It almost looks like a Dharma yeah, logo on the plane. On and, and people, yeah. I know that was an argument that went yes. round and round. People, like, yeah. I said, I finally said, "You can believe whatever you want." I, I it kind of looks like it could be. I, you know, right, but. Dirt on the dirt on the plane. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it was like it was one of those things where people went back and it just like started picking, you know, season one apart. It. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Goes, oh wait, that that was there, that was there. Oh, they said we the had numbers long off here. Seasons, Jack. We had long right. off seasons. <laughs> we did, we did. So it was uh, it's just amazing what they did with this show. I mean, I, I keep I say it every week, but it just you watch yeah. these episodes. Well, you couldn't go, help. Brilliant. You couldn't. You couldn't help but get obsessed about the details because. They gave you so, enough hints to say, oh, I did miss that last week, but I caught it on the rewatch. So if I missed that, what else did I miss? You know, right. so that you now sec second guessed yourself saying, oh, there was probably a whole bunch of stuff I missed. What am I I got to go back and watch again. And, and so, we did. And we, we did. did. Miss a lot. We did. I we would did. watch the show. Jump right on real quick towards the later seasons. Yeah. Post some stuff. <laughs> and then I would rewatch it that night. Uh, because I had to get some stuff out very quickly on the blogs and what have you, trailers and, you know, some initial notes and thoughts. And then I would watch it again later in the week before we did our podcast. And then when I was editing the podcast, I was pulling audio clips to add into the podcast. Yeah. I was watching it. So, like, I was just consuming this along the way. And not to forget every other day and every moment you're blogging and chatting, sorry, and posting. It because it's part of your DNA. <laughs> yes. It's in there. All of a sudden, you're yes. literally absorbed in every bit of your being with it. So it's in your blood now. Yeah, I, I know with, with us, I, we would record about a half hour after the episode mm -hmm. because 
because you know, it would take Jay like three hours to upload the show, and he had yeah. he was in co- he was in college, college. So he had to go to co- he had to he, he wouldn't go to sleep till like four in the morning. Mm-hmm. Then he had to get up like at seven to go to. Co- so we recorded. I'd be laying in bed replaying the episode in my head and going, "Oh, why didn't I think of that?" Yeah. And I would remember something I didn't say in the podcast. But then we had the second one, right? And like you had to watch it two or three times. Yeah. Again, then you go. But I would go, "Oh, I didn't even think about saying that." That's probably what's going on with that. It, it probably was wrong, but it, you know, at the time. But it, you you think you see things. That, oh, why didn't right. I do? That's well, we're always going to have that. We're always going to have the. Fir- we're going to have that first impression, that first watch, and you're going to go, "Okay, so you're trying to." have it all gather in your head. And then obviously we, you, you always, with that show, you needed to watch it over again and again and again and again and again. And again, and again. We, we had a few of those podcasts <laughs> where we decided to like record right after the episode. I think one there was two. a couple of them. Yeah. yeah. That was interesting and different. We used to record like three, four days later or right. on the weekend because of just the week. Right. Before. Cause I would have to get my blog out the next morning of the episode and it was I was up all night and the part of the rest of the day. But it like again, it helped me be prepared for the podcast by the time we got to it. But yeah, but there was a couple of them that uh, I know somebody had wanted me to uh, when the finale aired, um, wanted to get my raw initial thoughts. reaction and thoughts on the finale. And I'm like, I I can't I can't do that. I can't commit to that because I need to. First of all, it was too emotional for me because I knew it was ending and part of my own life was ending with it. And I just didn't want to get into you it. You had to it, digest it. I, yeah, I can't give you that initial thing because my my first reaction is going to be just surface. And I don't want that. Not when I spent this much time being deep with it. I, you know, So it's hard to give that initial reaction. So you know, I take my hats off to you and Jay because that's... That's hard to do that right off the bat like that. Well, we took some heat. There's no because people. I, I still remember this one email. I, it was uh, I told us earlier. It was the guy sent an email saying, "Why don't you blink and watch the show more than once before you record?" And I and I and I was typing up. Or my wife goes, "What?" Because I was kind of angry as I typed, and she goes, "What are you doing?" I go, "I'm sending this guy a response back. Why don't you f and watch? Uh, <laughs> why don't you f and watch the show?" Go listen to another podcast. And I didn't yeah. hit set. She goes, look, do you really want to do that? No. I said, yeah. I said, no. And then the guy sent him a, a, a note back three or four days later saying, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. was. I just started listening to you guys. I didn't know that was yeah. your initial reaction that you do yeah. another podcast. I apologize. I go, oh, I'm glad I didn't do that. So, yeah, <laughs> because literally the initial reactions are great for that moment for that time. But then by the time you sit on it, you think about it, you rewatch it, you process it. And you're like. Okay, I can get back into my own mode of the depth of it. Then, then it's it's a I feel like I watched a different episode. So, but now it's different. Even watching like something like Game of Thrones because people are doing it live. Yeah, you know, they're, they're I, live, I don't know how they're yeah. live streaming, they're live tweeting, and it's very interesting how it continues to evolve and change. Yeah. And like uh, watching TV, the final scene in this episode, clear apparently. Yes, we need yeah. 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 Well, and, the, uh, the funny you know, thing is that it's Locke's handmade dog whistle. He yeah, blows yeah. the whistle, and all of a sudden, there's Claire. All right, coincidence, <laughs> but still, I'm like, wow, he's got a magical dog whistle. <laughs> you, got, you, got, you got Boone's body, Boone the body guy going, Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just noticed I had this on public, so th- th- these things in the chat are people that are listening to this. Right? Oh. Cool. I didn't. I didn't realize. That. Usually, I put it on private, and I have it on public. Wonderful. Did you? Oh, I can't I see, see anything. Oh, I you don't see, have the I, chat. Let I, me see. I see that here, there's live comments. I didn't click on it. Okay, yeah, there we go. go. Well, hello. If you're listening to us, that. welcome to Lost. Jo- join <laughs> the pot. Join our rewatch. We started uh, back at August 22nd. But I was like, those are weird comments coming from you guys. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I could have said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, normally it's on private, but that's that's my yeah. mistake. I, uh, see it's a, I see it says pu- it's public up there, but it's all good. And but uh, I would I, say from the cliffhanger moments, that was ooh, that was Claire, and then boom, lost yeah. the title card showing up. Was where like, was ooh, she? The yeah. so ooh. so impactful, and you all week long they hooked yeah. us. They hooked yeah. us. Well, even now because mm-hmm. I. I'm watch doing the rewatch and I stop after so I won't get confused. I was oh no. I go, well, I gotta stop. 
I, I, mean, I know it. I know what happens, but it's like okay. you get you pulled back it. in again. It's like I, I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see it. But uh, it is. It is hard sticking to the exact episode because we do. Our brain knows. Okay, we bleh, this is coming or whatever. So right. But it's cool I, because you have to concentrate. <laughs> and I did want to point out that we did talk about a little bit. That Michael wants to build a raft, and yes. you got Jack. What's Jack Hurley? Charlie. Or Kate, I can't remember who was there, but they're all looking at him like he was an, a Saeed. Yeah. yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Crazy. You know, you have to find the cha- that shipping channel. You have to, I go, I go, here's Michael. I thought he was making a great point. You know, it's like, a, you know, great suggestion. Hey, let's build a raft. And they're all like just blowing him off. Even poor, Wa- poor Michael had to deal with the Walt also kind of blowing him off when he's like, this is punishment. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, you'd be fair. I go, I remember back in the day when my dad used my to dad do something. And, yeah. and I used to have to get up like at 4 a.m. in this every summer and go work with them to like six at night. I go, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? And now I'd give <laughs> I'd give any of those t- times to have take those times back and just like God, I was such a jerk. You know, you look back and you it's say, It's part God, of growing up, though. Yeah, it's part young. of growing up. So when I saw that scene, like we we're talking about things relating to us, right away it yeah. comes back to yeah, I remember telling my dad that. I was like, yeah. what am I being punished for? What, God, why are you such a jerk? <laughs> it's all this different stuff you would say to him that, you know, now it's I, like. That was one of the things when people say why one of the things uh, why loss was so successful was just being able to relate. Every one of us watching the show could relate to the storytelling, to each, to various individual characters. The cast was so diverse. So whether you are an Asian fa- American, an Asian in Asia and China, I was Sun and Jin, and you know, I I had Saeed that I was kind of like, hey, this is a guy that looks like me, you know, and what have you. And I think that and all strong these- characters too. Yes. Not Great. just back, I mean, not not no. just background characters. Right. They're strong, powerful, characters. powerful. Taking female character like Kate and giving her such a strong role and giving that uh, early signs of woman empowerment. And Damon is known for doing that in his writing. Yeah. So I think it's kind of neat. And even uh, Carlton. So I I think when people start to really think about why Lost was successful, it was more of these core things and the character development. And that's how shows are. I measure shows now. Like if it doesn't have good character development, I'm not watching it. Yeah, I yeah. can't stay interested in it yeah loss has ruined tv for me i can't oh it's, it's absolutely I, ruined I, it for me i mean i have popcorn shows i have shows i watch sure. I, I, I watch the new magna pi and i've watched the hawaii vivo from the beginning and i know i know what it is you know it's just like it's a popcorn yeah. show i just kick it you know can sit there and watch it but yeah. i it's loss has destroyed tv for me i need shows like the with challenge, depth. The, the, with well, depth. The, the challenge, challenge you. You, know, yeah. you, it's a, yeah. you can't, you can't, it's like, oh my God, this show's stupid. Well, we have this in my house all the time because Chris will put a, my husband will put a show on or something that he's interested in. And I'll just be like, not even watching it. Really. He's like, you're not going to watch it. I go, no, it doesn't even interest me. Like I know in the first few minutes, if this is going to interest me, if I like a character, if the story writing is strong. So anyway, he'll go, well, I'm sorry. It's not lost. <laughs> <laughs> they don't do that all the time. Sorry, it's not lost. <laughs> well, my so wife, my wife actually tells me not to watch is. TV with her because if I don't like it, I'm making fun of it. See, that's me. That's she me. Goes, she goes, "Can you just let me watch this show?" That's without Chris. You picking it apart, because I'll go like, "Oh, come on, this is just stupid." I am. See, that, that's exactly what I got going on with my hubs. Same. I'll thing. tell you one thing. A little tidbit, Jack. I am with my wife now because of Lost. Oh. Yeah, and, that's uh, right. Um, we actually had dated in high school, separated, but met 18 years later and talk about fate and destiny. Karen knows about yep. the story. Many of the fans know, but when we started kind of dating again was between season five and six. And I had already planned a trip out to Oahu for the first time to go check out the lost sets and her best friend which was a childhood friend of ours when we dated in high school, actually lived in Oahu, and I was going to go stay with her. Well, her friend convinced her to come as well. Oh. And so my wife, Marie, and I actually, our first trip after 18 years together, not even married, just a month into dating again, we were in Hawaii. So and it's like an episode of Lost. This, yeah, and I was this crazy, obsessed fan, and she went with me to the Lost Beach and various places, the uh, Dharmaville, and uh, I knew, like, just I knew in my head at that moment, like, this girl was, even though I had this history with her prior in high school, 
18 years later, it's a different person. I'm a different person. I knew that she was accepting me of my craziness. And just that led to our initial, like, falling in love with one another. And we took that picture that I yes. have of the same, like, Desmond. And uh, so, like, yeah. in front of the building. <laughs> so, it's like, uh, that's why, that's one of the reasons why we're together. So, I mean, right, talk yeah. about loss changing people's lives. And like I said, yeah. I, created, I had a career out of it. So, I mean, it's really interesting how it has affected all our lives. It's crazy when you think about it. Yeah, it's just crazy. I mean, just, I don't know. Is there anything else you guys want to get any other notes? Well, I think that kind of covered most of it. I'm sure there's. Yeah, that's anyone, that's... anyone in that chat have something to say? Is <laughs> <laughs> did we did we mess something? No. Um, if anybody wants to f go back and look at any of my crazy chicken scratch notes, you can find Karen's lost notebook on Blogspot. It's still there. It, they're still there. Don't leave any hate mail. I'm over that. <laughs> um, but no, that's the, the, the original notes are all still there. Um, and uh, I thank God I took them because I, I need them when I come visit you, Jack. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I need them. Who knew I'd still need them 15 years later? <laughs> See, my problem with my notes is I can't read them. So oh. it's like I have to squint. <laughs> my well, handwriting is pretty terrible. <laughs> It, it, the weird thing is I did transcribe them from my chicken scratch, but it's still left in its original bat format. So, <laughs> well, that's good though. Yeah. It's I'm, like still, a, I'm still looking for the girl that posted about the orange on MySpace. I never could find her. After she left the group. She was really very, yeah. And now, till this day, I don't know who that person is, but she, that's, led see, to that, the to, to, that's sad. As long as people yeah. aren't hurting people or saying yeah. something negative about something, I don't get where people like you. I think you said uh, people behind the keyboard are just, yeah. I never understood that where people just have, feel this need to tear people apart. But you know, yeah. it happens once, once we put ourselves out here, right? We are, it, it is what it is, but some people could be absolutely very cruel. I say, um, bring it on. I, yeah, I, I, look, I'm the yeah. same way. I, I don't, I don't, it doesn't phase me. It look, doesn't. I, you know, it, it doesn't phase me. I, because it's just, I grew, look, I'm an Italian New Yorker. I grew up in New York <laughs> City. Nothing is going to phase me. But it, it is sad to see that some people just really kind of go in for the, the attack. And it bullying. is, it's like, it's why, bullying. why does it yeah. make people, yeah. yeah, what would, what triggers somebody so badly that you have to be so vicious to someone? But it does happen. So you I just, know it made me, it made me a better ice hockey rep because I had, because you know you, you you take so much you know any kind of any anytime you're doing a sport yeah. it's so intense that I just kind of no nah, whatever I mean I I've yeah. dealt with people from the loss so I <laughs> but you know what they still came back and listened every week yeah and they still came back and read people's blogs every week and they still were on threads and message boards and yeah. they still they still came yeah. back every week and. You know, I'm never watching the show ever again. Never, never, never. They, 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 <laughs> they, they killed you know. Charlie. I'm never watching the show ever <laughs> yeah. again. My yep. favorite one, consider me unsubscribed. That's right. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Um, I would I would always say okay, well send me send me a receipt of how much I charge you. <laughs> and I'll, I'll 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 pay you back triple what I charge you. Uh and they just, you know, I just, I just had yeah. fun with it. It's just because said, it is. It's, it's. We're here just sharing the the love. Okay, yeah. that right. That's all we're doing. We're just sharing the love. You don't right. have to like it. Look, but we're sharing the love. Ninety nine point nine percent were awesome. So, yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely, oh, yeah. and yeah. still are. Yes. I still, yep, yep. I'm still friends. I'm still yeah, friends. I'm like we forget, just like I mean, I know Karen and I on the podcast, but I have so many Facebook friends from that MySpace days that yeah. you know we don't yeah. know each other's lives just through social media. And, and like you said, around the world, yes. around the world. I yes. mean, it's just it's amazing how in different countries. It's like going, oh my god! It just it just can't say enough about this show. Yeah, and how incredible it was. But anyway. I had a great, this was a great, great awesome. chat. I, oh, I, I had a great time. And Neil, it was great to see you again. <laughs> yeah, I, haven't you, you. I haven't seen you in years. I know. I yeah. know. And, it, uh, and, and uh, if you ever decide you want to kind of hang out with the ODI again, Danny would like to join us again next time. He couldn't be with us tonight because a uh, family event up upstate or something like that. We'll, so We'll, def we'll definitely uh, have but, you guys um, on again. Yeah, but we, we had, I had a blast. To had a blast always. Looking forward to it. You're yes, amazing, well. Jack. Thank you so much. Thanks for everything. Well, I don't Appreciate know if I'm amazing, but I'm. I you're, guess amazing. I am. <laughs> you're amazing. You're amazing. And this is and this is the world's greatest lost recap show in the yes. history of. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Let, <laughs> it, it is. Tell, it is. Tell Jane, calling you. I said hi. <laughs> I will. I will do so. I will do. I haven't so. seen them in a while. <laughs>
Yeah. I, Thank I, see you. Him a lot. I see him a lot. Uh. I, I guess I'll say something. <laughs> anyway, thanks for taking time out of your night uh, to you. join us in our last fan. The two people in chat, hey, thanks for joining us. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but that, that's it. This show will be up the first week of October. So awesome. That's all we got. Namaste. Namaste. Bye, everybody. <laughs>